Hello, Sean. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. So, and perhaps if you could tell us what has brought you down to DGI today. Well, I'm here to talk about the, the GeoInt that we're using in LAPD right now. And but if you could tell us more about that, it sounds particularly interesting as this is obviously more commonly associated with the military. Yes, and in fact, we see that there's a lot of overlap between things that uh, defense industry is in, in, involved in and things that, that we do every day uh, as a policing agency. And, and that was a finding from coming to the conference. But what we're doing in, in LA that involves GeoInt is the uh, use of predictive modeling to forecast crime. So um, what is the current project then that you're working on? Well, right now we have what we call the Los Angeles Predictive Policing Experiment. And it's a true experiment where we are testing this concept of can we forecast crime effectively? And then using those forecasts, can we reduce crime? So how are you then reducing crime? Well, what we're doing is uh, using a, a program, software that was developed at the University of California at Los Angeles with help from UC Irvine and, and from Santa Clara University. We have a forecasting tool. Uh, we input crime data that goes back about three years for burglary, burglary for motor vehicle, and Grand Theft Auto. And then it generates every day for us a forecast map of the areas, and they're very specific areas, 500 by 500 square foot area. And we'll put 20 of those boxes on a map in my division. And those will show us the areas that have the highest probability of one of those crimes occurring. And then we take that information and we supply it to patrol every day. And we tell them, get in those boxes and do some problem solving. And so far, it seems like it's been effective in, in preventing those crimes from occurring. To, to what degree then has it been effective? Well, the, what we find is looking at a control day versus a treatment day, meaning the days that I pick the mission versus the computer. Uh, the computer is about 8% more accurate than I am in predicting the crimes. And they also, uh, just as doing a time series analysis, looking at where we were last year versus this year, we're somewhere between 8 and 16% less crime of those crimes in the areas that are affected. So what does that represent then, 16%? It's probably uh, between 6 and 10 crimes a week, something like that. So in my area, which is a, a, one of the 21 geographic areas of the division, we were experiencing last year about 60 of those types of crimes, those three property crimes a week. Uh, during the test, we are experiencing somewhere in the order of 40 to 46 of those um, a so week. That's so a very big reduction. It is a big reduction. We, what we try to do, to be fair about it, is we looked at the two, 2011 average leading up to the test. We were at about 50 crimes, and now we're in the 40s. So it's a couple of crimes a week. What I try to tell the officers is, you know, if you times that over the whole department and you times that over the whole year, that's a lot of victims. In the first 10 weeks of this test, we're talking about 60 to 80 people that didn't have their house burglarized or their car broken into uh, or some other you know, property crime occur. So it's pretty conclusive that that is actually the reason for it and it's not circumstantial that it happens to be that period of time. Because of the experimental design, we're able to look at um, the way we used to do things on the control days, and I still assign missions, and the way the computer does it on treatment days. And so really it's the gold standard of uh, experimental design is a randomized control test and that's in fact what we're doing. So we can say with some confidence that it is effective and then we're going to roll it out throughout the rest of the city and in each division where it's rolled we'll do a six month uh, experimental design test as well. So when do you think uh, in theory that, that rollout should be completed? The rollout is probably going to take at least a year because you get 21 divisions and, and we're coming up with new versions of the software all the time so there will probably be a version 2.0 out when we roll to the next division and so on. So what do you think will be in the 2.0 version? How much more successful do you project this project to be? I'll tell you, the things that, are, uh, that I like about the new version is it's much more user-friendly. So there's none of this cutting and pasting to come up with a map. It's automatic. It's much more like an iPad app. And you can do it in real time. And what we'll do is each watch will have a new set of forecasts. So there's four forecasts a day now instead of just one. So they'll be much more specific. And then, so the new application also has a real-time element. So it's an iPad app, essentially, that uh, the officer could run it based on their GPS position at the time, and it would show them the boxes or the predicted areas that are closest to them in time and space. So what are they actually doing then on the ground? 
Well, when the officers, I tell the officers, they get the map every day and now they'll get it for each watch. And I tell them, when you get out there, I can tell you where to go with some specificity. I can tell you when to be there. But I can't tell you, you need to use your knowledge, skills, and experience to do some problem solving when you get there. So you get in the box and you start looking at things that might contribute to this being a high probability crime area and do something about it. Well, thank you very much, but we are unfortunately out of time, so I'm very much looking forward to finding out more because I think it's a really interesting way of using geospatial intelligence in a way that we're not necessarily hearing from other people. So thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. All right.